Hi friends, welcome to Krakus video series. In this particular video, we will be discussing the Dashcat uh, 7 analysis. Uh, I took a blind attempt of quant section, Maruti took a blind attempt of the LRDI and verbal section. So, based from the perspective of a test taker, I want to give the analysis. What I thought was uh, a fair score in this particular test, what should be your expectations and basically what you should target for each of the percentile ranges. So, to start off with, I felt this was a slightly uh, moderate difficulty section. So, if you consider this with Dashcat 6, I feel it was marginally more difficult. So, accordingly, I would think that the percentile expectations, uh, the score should be slightly rounded down. I think around 30 per marks plus would be around 95 percentile say 35 plus would be like say 98 percentile plus or uh, uh, 37, 38, 39 would be around 99 percentile or actually maybe 40 also would be 99 percentile because this was marginally more difficult than what is generally what we see in CAT. So, maybe I would think a fair assessment of 99 percentile would be something I think around 40 to 42. So, this is just based on my uh, experience as a test taker where my scores usually lie in actual CAT versus what I see. This is not what you would see in your percentile window because that is uh, put indexed according to the test takers. But uh, depending on where I usually score in CATs over the years, I have scored around 99 percentile and my score in this particular one was uh, in quant section is around 99 percentile. In this one, it was 39. So, based on my understanding, I think around 30, uh, 40, 42, I also underperformed. So, I think 40, 42 should be 99 percentile. 35 to 40 should be around 98 to 99 percentile. Uh, this is basically my understanding of uh, the section based on my attempt and my historical attempts in actual CAT. Uh, given the fact that it was slightly difficult, question uh, choice or question selection became very, very important. Particularly when you have 22 questions and 40 minutes, the thing that you should absolutely avoid are the time sink questions. And there were quite a few time sink questions in this one. There was one question which ended up in a quadratic equation which would have taken a lot of time to solve. There were basically there was a good mix of questions. There were two easy questions, nine difficult questions, 11 uh, moderate difficulty questions. So, even if you did the easy to moderate questions, you would still be at 13, uh, 13 question mark, which would be enough to get till the 98 percentile, even before you attempted any of the hard questions. So, I think 40 or 42 is a realistic target over here. Uh, there were basically the issue was there were some time sink questions, especially in arithmetic. So, generally, whenever I ask people to attempt, I say make sure that you attempt everything of arithmetic, make arithmetic your strength. You should be very, very confident of your ability to solve questions in arithmetic. But the issue over here basically was that the arithmetic, some of the arithmetic questions were time sink questions. They were longer questions to even read and to solve, and some of them had traps in them. So, for example, the one with mixtures and solutions about the alcoholic percentage, that was basically it had two traps in them. I saw through one trap, but I did not see through the other trap. So, basically that had uh, me lose 3 marks. But uh, all of these basically mean that arithmetic, uh, if you consider that you have arithmetic, algebra, geometry and uh, all the other uh, topics, mod maths and probability, number systems, all of the other things. Basically, I felt that all of these other things were at CAT level or slightly simpler than CAT level. In fact, I feel they were simpler than CAT level, while arithmetic, which is generally very easy in actual CAT, was slightly harder than what you see in CAT level. So, if you were somebody who always attempts all arithmetic questions, you would have slightly struggled in this particular section. In fact, I felt geometry in this particular section was much easier than what is normally seen in geometry in CAT. Similarly, algebra in this particular, uh, this was easier than what is normally normally seen in algebra in CAT. So, with all of that in uh, keeping all of that in mind, I personally felt that question selection would basically make the difference between you easily crossing the 99 percentile threshold or easily crossing the 95 percentile threshold versus you struggling. Uh, the question, the issue was not the difficulty level of questions. There were, uh, there were easy questions, there were moderate questions, there were difficult questions. The question selection would basically make the difference because here you had to do around 14 to 15 questions correctly. That was should have been your target to actually do well. And picking 14 to 15 questions out of 22 leaves you a lot lot of questions to actually leave and selecting the right questions to leave would have made the difference in your score. So, always when you are analyzing this particular mock, go back and see which questions you actually attempted which you should have left. The questions that you took a lot of time to solve and basically see what would be a good heuristic to judge a question. 
Uh, I judge a question based on the length of that particular question. If a question seems to have quadratic equations, I think about solving that question twice because whenever there is a quadratic equation, you do not know for sure that it would be an easy quadratic equation to solve or not. Uh, and especially all of these things I always keep in mind. If you need to do enumeration of cases, for example, one of the algebra questions had enumeration of cases, you have to consider in different ranges what was going to be the case and count all of the cases. So all of those type of questions take time. And uh, your judgment of which question to pick and which question to leave will improve over time with practice. But uh, that is basically what would have made a difference in this particular section. So with that, I will leave you. Please go back to your own attempt and see which questions you actually picked and which you should have left. See the qu which questions you left but you should have solved. Okay? So go back and solve every question that you got wrong, every question that you left unattempted. And when whichever questions that you even attempted and got right also, check those where you spent a lot of time. Any question where you spent more than 3 minutes should automatically be highlighted to you and you should see that okay, this question was not a question I should have probably solved. Maybe if a question is this paragraph long, I should not try to attempt that question. So, think of all of these things in your next attempt to make sure that you slightly improve in your next attempt. So, thank you for tuning in. Maruti will do the verbal and DILR analysis. Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I am the co-founder of Kraku. In this video, we will be looking at the uh, analysis of Dashcat 7. Let us get started. We will first look at the verbal analysis. The verbal section of Dashcat 7 was definitely on the medium to tough side. This is one of the harder uh, mocks. And especially, I felt that none of the reading comprehensions were actually very straightforward. Even the verbal ability questions, I felt there were some uh, fairly difficult uh, verbal questions, especially in the para jumble section. We will look at it in detail. There were four RCs. Uh, the first RC was on Greek philosophy. This was with respect to uh, ancient Greek philosophy. And in general, I do not like this topic. Uh, so, I felt uh, that I would attempt it uh, at the end, which is what I actually did. The second topic was on astronomy. I was actually interested in the topic, but somehow I uh, was not able to do very well in this because I also did a new strategy this time, where normally when I look at uh, the RC sets, I will try to pick the easiest set first and I try to solve it. This time I felt let me try to pick the harder sets because my mind is fresh. So maybe I will be able to do better in the harder sets when I attempt them at the start. Which is what I actually did when I looked at all the four uh, reading comprehensions. The third one was on asset management and the fourth one was on modeling. When I immediately looked at modeling, I felt this was a fairly difficult and dry passage. But I wanted to attempt it first because like I said, I wanted to tackle the harder reading comprehensions at the start. And my accuracy in uh, this reading comprehension was actually pretty good because I attempted it at the first, but my mind became very tired. So after uh, the first 9-10 minutes, which I actually took to solve this uh, RC, and I actually took a lot more time because it was a difficult RC, my mind was very tired and I think that reflected in the rest of the passages also. Anyway, I did well in the modeling one, but I think this is a fairly difficult uh, RC. Because the passage was difficult to read. The questions were not very difficult, but understanding the passage, understanding what each of the paragraph uh, actually means and why the author actually uh, wrote that uh, passage in that particular order took time for me to really grasp. After this, I attempted uh, the asset management, which uh, was a fairly not a very difficult passage. I think normally, uh, probably if my mind was not as tired, I would have been able to do better. Uh, this is not a very difficult passage. But it was not a very trivial passage also, which I think most people should definitely answer. This I think was one of the easier out of the four passages. Then coming to the first two passages. One of the trademarks of this uh, dash cat was that some of the options were very long in reading comprehension. Because many of them were inferential based questions. The options were uh, very long and they were actually quite confusing. I was able to uh, remove two or eliminate two of the options, but two options I had difficulty in really picking which amongst the two options is actually the correct one. Normally when I get stuck in that kind of a scenario where I am able to eliminate two options and I had to figure out uh, which of the two remaining options are correct, I try to understand exactly what each of the option is saying. Normally there will be some slight difference, either some additional information is given which is wrong or some important information which has to be there is not given. So I try to look at both the options and I try to figure out what exactly is the difference between these two options and whether that difference uh, is correct or false. And using that difference, I am able to figure out and finalize what the correct option will be. But in this particular mock, because the options were long, for me to actually differentiate uh, uh, with specific detail, the difference between the last two options became very difficult. And it became fairly tiring also. 
so because of that i felt i found the reading comprehension sets to be much more on the difficult side anyway amongst the four uh, reading comprehension passages i felt personally that the asset management and the astronomy passages were doable the remaining two passages i felt are fairly difficult and uh, if you make the mistake that i did where you put in a lot of your uh, brain power in answering a difficult reading comprehension passage you will uh, spoil the rest of the section because your mind is very tired you are not able to concentrate better which is what i actually did coming to the verbal uh, section the verbal section as can be expected had three para summaries three para jumbles and two odd one outs the para jumbles this time were definitely on the harder side one of the reasons i felt the para jumbles were on the harder side was because normally in a para jumbles i am able to easily identify the first sentence the first sentence always seems to be the start of a paragraph or the start of any long uh, line so i am able to identify the start once i am able to identify the starting uh, line getting the order is not very difficult and in general my accuracy in para jumbles is very good but in this dash cat one of the things that i felt was that uh, the para jumbles started in the middle of a paragraph so it was not very easy to identify what the starting line of that para jumble will be because of which i actually did not do well in the para jumbles the para summaries and the odd one out were on the medium side especially one odd one out i felt was on the easier side which i think most people should be able to get but otherwise overall even the verbal ability section was on the medium to tough side overall a very good score in this verbal section would be 25 plus and a respectable score would be 20 plus let us now look at the lrdi analysis the lrdi of uh, this uh, dash cat 7 was slightly on the medium side to easy side easy medium is what i would say because there is at least one set which uh, people should get correct now amongst the four sets i found one uh, set to be very difficult this was an arrangements question which had uh, four questions but multiple scenarios were possible normally the kind of questions which i find easy and the kind of questions that i like to solve are the questions where once you solve it then the entire set is solved this arrangements question even the arrangements is a topic that i like uh, i felt uh, it was difficult because i could immediately figure out after spending 3 4 minutes that multiple cases are possible i felt that it is very difficult to actually get one final seating arrangement that was the reason i actually started this and after 3 4 minutes i left it if you look at the remaining uh, three sets the games and tournament set was a six question set and this was definitely on the easier side now you can solve the entire set you can figure out the score line of each of the matches that are given in the games and tournament set and this is a set that uh, people should definitely attempt it is a six question set and if you get it correct you are getting 18 marks which is worth its value in gold amongst the remaining two sets the table and graph uh, set this is the di set for uh, dash cat 7 there were four questions in it but this was not a very easy set normally when i look at a di set uh, where i i had to read a chart uh, or i had to look at a bar graph normally the questions are easy but here i felt uh, there was a lot of calculations involved tricky calculations they were not just uh, calculations which are involving uh, a calculator you have to apply your mind to actually calculate so this is slightly on the trickier side this is not very difficult but this is definitely on the trickier side and you would uh, need to spend at least around 8 to 10 minutes to get this correct i spent it because i completely gave up on the arrangement set so i knew that i was not attempting it after some time so i was able to solve this but again if you spend around say 10 minutes or a good student if he spends around 10 to 12 minutes this that person should definitely get the easy to medium uh, set on table and graph and again if he spends 10 to 12 minutes he should get the games and tournament set so within 25 minutes you should definitely get these two sets correct and now you will be left with around 15 minutes now amongst the 15 minutes you can either spend it on the arrangement uh, set or you can go and uh, answer the pass code the pass code was a question on permutations and combinations permutations and combinations in general are tricky but they are quite often asked in lrdis and each of the questions each of the six questions in this set were individual questions so these are the kind of sets that i don't particularly like wherein uh, every question you have to answer separately so i came to the pass code at the end and i was able to get three or four questions correct in it so three or four questions were fairly straight forward but there were two questions which i felt were uh, very difficult so i could not really make any headway into them but uh, again this is a medium set because somebody who knows the basics of permutations and combinations will at least get around say two questions correct out of six so overall somebody who is uh, a smart student who is a very good student and is also a smart student so who is picking the right sets will first figure out that uh, the games and tournaments is an easy set he should answer that the table and graph 
is slightly time consuming but again should be answered and will answer at least say two questions in past codes. This is somebody who is a very good student. Now, so if you are getting these correct, that is around say uh, 12 questions correct. So that is 36 marks. But again, because you are human and you might make some mistakes, a very good score in this will be 30 plus. 30 plus is a very good score. And somebody who is a good student who is looking for a good score in CAT, especially in LRDA, should definitely aim for 24 plus. That is, they should try to get at least eight questions correct. The reason I'm insisting on that is because one of the questions, one of the sets, which has six questions, like I already mentioned, is a fairly easy one. And that should be gotten correct.